Hi guys, last week was Ludum Dev 54 and I thought it was a good opportunity to just brush up my game dev skill in all the areas and uh, give it a try. So I'm going to share with you my experience with that, a um, couple of things I've learned and hopefully that, that might be entertaining or useful to you. So let's get into it. So the game looks a little bit like this. It is about an owl trying to uh, hatch its own eggs. You have you got to hatch your eggs by keeping them at a specific temperature for a bit like this one here it's perfect temperature but if we leave it in the open for too long he's gonna he's gonna start to go cold so let's grab it bring it next to fire you didn't see it but i just ate a worm so i can lay down an egg and same thing for this one if you we leave them a little bit too long next to fire they're gonna start to burn and of course we do not want that so the game has a lot of bugs, but if you want to try it out, it's going to be in the description down below. Mostly, I'm quite happy about the implementation of it, how uh, we, we were able to make it look and feel the mood especially, but there are so many bugs that it's really hard to play and it's not really fun. I haven't really had time to actually test the fun factor of it. So, um, not so proud of that thought, not so proud of the bugs, but I'm actually quite proud of the implementation and how we made it look, as I said. Let's go into the things that, um, <laughs> that are typical, right? So the things that I learned, that I didn't really learn, but that I knew going into a game jam that I failed to execute. First, do not scope too big. Second, doing your things actually hard. Um, in my case, I was lucky. I had a chaotic uni making the models. I had lucky making the rig, but the rest is actually quite a lot of work. And going into it, I'm like, of course I can do animation. Of course I can do all the implementation and the code and the testing and the, I'll actually no. So doing your thing is hard. Doing a lot of different roles is hard and you have to plan that out in, in your scope, right? So scope small if you want to do a little bit of everything. Third one would be to take breaks, especially because I was streaming. I, I kept being in front of my computer the whole day and it was quite tiring mentally. So I would um, get into a problem. For example, I was just trying to randomize through four different vector and it took me quite a while to just do that. Like a, a thing that would usually take me a minute to write in code actually took me five to ten because I was just so exhausted. So taking a break, actually important. The fourth typical tip would be to reassess at the end of the day uh, your progress, see if you need to change your scope, see if you need to change anything to ensure that you deliver. So we haven't done that, <laughs> but it's something that you should actually do. Number five, define clear features. So defining exactly what needs to be in the game by the time you ship. And then you can do the nice to have. We had a lot of nice to have that I was trying to implement in the middle of it. And that's not the moment. You're trying to get your working game without too many bugs in front of everybody first. So those were the five steps I actually didn't do quite well this time around. And um, I need to be reminded <laughs> every time that these things are important. Now for the things I actually learned during this autumn there, um, here are some of them. The first one is do not scope too big again. And the reason I say again now is because yes, I downscope. I do my best to downscope to make something small, but I realize I need to downscope the downscoped version of my scope. Just like when you go to put the bed sheets on and you're trying to go and, and tuck it beneath and you're trying to turn your bed sheet around to understand which side goes where. And then you're like, okay, it's this one. You try to put it on and it's not that one. So I learned and I developed a mechanism when I put my bed sheet on, I find the, the side that I think is correct. And then I flip it and I realize that's the good side. So just like I do from a bed sheet, I should downscope and then I should downscope again after that. Another thing that I should have done is really just take the time to write down a code architecture because right now um, we have two main objects in the scene, one being the, the player itself uh, through the player interaction script, another one being the egg and a lot of code over here talk to each other. They don't really have a reference to each other and it is just a mess. You can see that, uh, for example, there is duplicated code for get snap tile. It's here, but it's also there. It's the same thing. So basically, take some time to actually write a code architecture. Take some time to draw some boxes. Who's going to be interacting with who? Because at the end of the day, yes, it is a game jam. Yes, you're going to make annoying, disgusting spaghetti code. But I mean, I've lost a lot of time because of that spaghetti code towards the end. And it's a buggy mess right now that I can't really debug. So um, there is some value in making things that actually work well. <laughs> Another thing I've learned is to have a dual light setup in your scene, one that actually highlights um, your lights and another one that highlights your shadows. So here I have a, um, 
a cold color for my main light and then for my secondary light I have a warmer color and these two are actually perpendicular which means that um, one of them is going to be hitting my shadows one of them is going to be hitting the, the direction I want lights in and it's actually giving it quite a good contrast like this and before that I was using a single light setup so it looked a little bit like this instead which obviously is a big change so that versus this Another thing that I've learned is that animating inside of Unity can be quite painful, actually. On the flip side, animating is actually quite fun. I've also learned that you can change post-processing values in a dynamic fashion, more on that quite soon in another video. I've also learned that you need to plan out some time to create your page because if it doesn't look good, people are not going to click it, it's as simple as that. I've also learned about pattern matching in C Sharp after posting my disgusting code in Discord, thank you Rem. And finally, sounds are an actual thing. Our game didn't have any sounds. We didn't plan out for that. But you know what? Um, at the end of the day, we spent a lot of time in front of our computer. We made things happen. We got there in time. So we made it through the deadline, all on stream, all while interacting with you guys, having fun. So I consider it to be quite a success. Um, am I going to participate in the next one? I don't know. I might participate in some more custom game jams, maybe for uh, other creators instead of the Ludum there, but I was quite happy about the experience once more. And I want to thank everybody who actually joined during the live stream, who came in and uh, gave us the kind words to keep on going, and we did. So, yeah, that's about it. Good experience overall. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something, and if not, just keep on tuning in at one point you'll learn something right or just hang out who knows <laughs> all right see you soon cheers